Today I try to use Flareon in competitive Pokemon 6v6. Will it come out on top or be a major flop? With the Guts ability and access to a speed boost with its new move Trailblaze, Flareon has the potential to deal some major damage to my opponent's teams. However, in order to activate Guts you need to hold the Toxic Orb, which puts us on a timer. How much damage can we deal within that time? If you find yourself enjoying the battles and want to see more, just a friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. So without further ado, let's see what Flareon can do. Alright, Turtle Owner has brought a pretty cool snow team. Alolan Ninetales with Alolan Sand Slash is pretty cool to see. And then you got Saru Legend Hydrapple in the back as Fret. It's great just because obviously a big fret on its own. And Tentacruel is also really cool to see. So I'm, I'm looking at the team, I'm thinking, you know, without the snow... Um, Flareon does pretty well. It takes out the Alolan uh, Sand Slash. Facade's going to do a lot of damage to everything except from the Cerulege, pretty much, uh, which is great. So if we lead up, if we assume they're going to counter lead us, um, they probably lead off with Tentacruel, I think. So I'm going to lead off with Rotom, and that way we can kind of Volt Switch on whatever they do as well. It does give them a free switch into Great Tusk, but it's a risky switch, that's for sure. And the battle begins. Good luck, Avon Turtle Owner. So they're going to lead off with Kraken, the Tentacruel as I expected. As um, I lead off with Rotom Wash, which is brilliant. So, great matchup for us for the first turn. So, do we go for a high Evolve Switch straight away? Do I need Scarf on this thing? I don't think I need Scarf. So, I think I'll Trick because they're probably going to go into Great Tusk anyway. And I'd like to be able to switch up my moves. So, I'm going to go for a Trick real quick. If they do stay in, interestingly enough, as we Trick them our Choice Scarf, what are we going to get in return? Hopefully not Black Sludge. And um, we they get Choice Scarf, we get Leftovers, which is alright, to be fair. As they go for a knockoff, knocking off our leftovers, which is fine. Um, so now what we can do is we can go for a Volt Switch quite easily. Um, they're pretty much locked into knockoff there. So let's go for a Volt Switch. They withdraw the Kraken. What are they going to go into? Probably Hydrapple. It's a safe neutral switch. Uh, Mirror Wall comes in. That is the Ninetales. Interesting. So it's good. Freeze Dry Shenanigans and Snow Warning Shenanigans all in one. And we go for a Volt Switch though. That's going to do a lot of damage. Nice little chunk of damage to the uh, Ninetales, which is great. And now, now we can go into our Flareon if we want to and deal some massive damage to something. So let's go Flareon now. Calcifer comes in. There we go. They'll probably want to go for their Aurora Veil, but I think a Guts Boosted Flare Blitz from Flareon still KOs even for Aurora Veil. I could be wrong. Um, let's go for the Flare Blitz and find out. They withdraw. What are they going to go into? Probably the Great Tusk or the Tentacruel, right? It's the Rule Edge. Ah, the... Um, the, the ultimate wall to my uh, Flareon, if it's Flash Fire. It's not Flash Fire, so this Flare Blitz is still going to do a decent chunk of damage. Over half to the Cerulege. That's crazy damage right there. That is crazy damage right there. So, um, if we assume they're going to go for a Poltergeist here, we should definitely switch out. And um, What to go into against the Cerulege, I don't know. It's got plus two speed, minus one defenses. Um, I think our best bet is probably a Loma, a Loma... I can't even say it. A Loma Mola. So we'll go into Aloma Mola and then we'll flip turn. Flip turn should take out the Cerulege from here. With minus one defense and Palindra and Aloma Mola has decent attack compared to its special attack. So let's go into Aloma Mola now. They go for a Poltergeist. It's going to sting a little bit, but not too much. Nothing too drastic, you know? Because we do have max defense investment. So let's go for a flip turn now, expecting them to either switch out or attack again. They go for an Endure. Ooh. Interesting. So flip turn comes through. Flip turn comes through. They're going to get a weakness policy, aren't they? There's the weak armor. Boosting its speed and defense. There's the weakness policy. Ah, this Cerulege is a big threat right now. A very big threat right now. But we at least get back. We get our regenerator. So we can definitely take a hit from the Cerulege at plus two. That's for sure. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to go Golurk. We're going to have to go Golurk and we're going to Earthquake. Because we do have the Focus Sash. They didn't sell Stealth Frogs or anything like that. So we're all good. Um, so now I'm going to go for an Earthquake. I don't want to mess around with this uh, Cerulege. And they could be Terra Normal. So I don't want a Poltergeist. They go for a Shadow Sneak at plus two. It should take us down to a Sash. It does take us down to a Sash. But luckily... Oh, it's a crit. Maybe it didn't... Maybe it did matter. I don't know. Um, but luckily, we have got the Focus Sash. So we can go for an EQ and take out this Cerulege. No problem. So Go Lurk's done its job. Came in, sponged a hit, dealt some massive damage, taking out the Cerule Edge, which is absolutely fantastic. So, GG Cerule Edge. Mirror Wall comes in once again. The Nine Tails. This thing can and will take out Golurk in one shot. However, they probably go for an Aurora Veil, so I'm tempted to go for a Stealth Rox here. Um, I am going to go for a Stealth Rox here because they might have gone for the Aurora Veil, but I didn't want to switch out because I don't really have much to take a freeze dry. 
So that's the, also part of the problem. So Golo goes down, which is fine. It did its job. It took care of the Cerule Edge. Now we go back into Flareon, and Flareon gets a free Flare Blitz on something, which is fantastic. So with Flareon in, let's go for a Flare Blitz. I think Flare Blitz is the best one to go for. They withdraw the Ninetales. They don't want to take a Flare Blitz to the face, even through Aurora Veil. And they're going to go into Kraken, the Tentacruel. Let's see how well you take a Flare Blitz, because Cerule Edge didn't take it very well. So let's see how well you take a Flare Blitz. Let's go for it. Not very well at all, which is fantastic. We do get some recoil, and obviously we do get some poison as well. But that is fine. We can handle that, no problem. The next time we get a free switch in with Flare Blitz, we're going to be golden. So let's go into Aloma Mola right now, because we can definitely hard wall this thing, unless it toxics us. So we'll withdraw Flareon like so. We'll withdraw Flareon like so. Palindrome comes in. They go for a Sludge Wave. And that does no damage because of the Assault Vest, which is fantastic. Now, all we need to do is go for a Flip Turn. So, let's Flip Turn here. Because they do withdraw the Tentacruel, knowing they can't really touch us. And they're going to go into Mirror Wall once again, the Ninetales, which is fantastic. So, this gives us another free switch in with uh, Flareon. So, we go for a Flip Turn here. Bit of chip damage, which is always nice. And then we go into Flareon real quick. So, the Flareon comes in. And something takes some serious Flare Blitz damage. Because I'm confident we can live a Moonblast after Poison. I'm confident we can live a Moonblast. So let's go for the Flare Blitz now. And then we'll Kamikaze. We're basically kamikaze at this point. Because there's not a lot that wants to switch in. Now they withdraw the Ninetales. What's going to take the Flare Blitz to the face right now? Kraken comes back in. The Tentacruel. That is a water type that Flareon has officially taken out in two hits. With a fire move. Absolutely pure power right there. Pure power. And we should live this as well. We should live this even after poison. Should. Yeah, we do live after poison. So we get a free quick attack off on something, which is nice. As the snow does stop, Tentacruel is down. And we get a free quick attack on something, which is great. Mirror Wall comes back in. This thing can sell all over us right now. Now, just in case it decides to uh, Aurora Veil this turn... Instead of taking us out. I'm not going to quick attack. I'm going to flare blitz. I, I went for trailblazers by accident. I accidentally nudged the controller. But it's fine. They go for a moonblast anyway. Which is going to take us out. So Flareon goes down. They obviously didn't want to take a flare blitz. So we knew they were going to attack us. So it didn't matter what move I clicked there. I guess quick attack would have been better. Just to get some of shit. But it's not the end of the world. Like trust me. It's not the end of the world. So now we can go into our own Alolan Ninetales. And this thing's weakened enough to the point where I think our... Um, our... Moonblast is going to do a lot of damage. So let's go for a Aurora Veil first and foremost. Aurora Veil comes through. We win the speed tie, which is nice. Unless they're not max speed, in which case it's not a speed tie. And um, they go for a Moonblast once again. They are not Aurora Veil. And that's going to do no damage. Now our Moonblast should do a lot more damage. So they go for their own Aurora Veil. They win the speed tie this time, which is fine. So we're going to go for a uh, Moonblast real quick. And that should still do a lot of damage. Not really. Oh, we got a crit. Oh, that's unfortunate. That crit was unfortunate as the Ninetales goes down. Gleok comes in. That is an amazing name for a Hydrapple. I really like that. We can assume they're going to Terra here. So we have to switch out. Um, I'm leaning towards them going for a Terra Blast. Or a Giga Drain. In which case, our best switching is probably going to still be you. So I'm going to go Aloma Mola. So we switch out our Ninetales, expecting a Terra. Definitely expecting a Terra, because they're not going to take a Freeze Drive to the face, right? Yep, they're going to Terra, which is fantastic. So Terrastalization comes through for the Hydrapple. Probably Terra Steel or Poison, one of the two. Fire! Fire also works. Fire also works. We can handle Fire. So the question is, do they go for a Terra Blast here, or do they go for a Giga Drain? Nasty plot. Oh, okay. This is fine, though. We have got the Mirror Coat, so I know we can take a Giga Drain from this thing. Let's go for a Mirror Coat real quick. They go for a Giga Drain. It does half, which unfortunately for them means that this double damage Mirror Coat is going to take them out. As the Gola, um, the Gola, the um, <laughs> Hydrapple does go down to a Mirror Coat, which is fantastic. Being able to pull that off is amazing, so that's good. Mammoth comes in the Great Tusk. Now, this thing is a threat in its own right. Um, do we go for a Scold here? I think we always go for a Scold here. So let's go for a Scold. Um, they go for a Stealth Frox, which is fine. That's going to um, get some chip on us if we switch out, which they're probably expecting a flip turn here. 
Um, but I'm actually going for a Scald here. I don't see any reason not to. Even though the Aurora Veil's up, it's still doing no damage. Um, I get, didn't get the burn. So what do we do here? I, I'm leaning towards something else. I don't want to bring Ninetales in. I think I flip turn here because they're going to attack us with an Earthquake. Yeah, they go for an Earthquake. Or a Headlong Rush could have come. One of the two. Uh, flip turn comes through. Boom. Rocky Helmet is a thing, but we do have the Regenerator ability, so we're not too worried about that. As Aloma Mola comes back to us, I think Aloma Mola wins us the game. Somehow. So I'm going to go into Rotom now. Rotom's looking like a pretty good switch. So we're going to Calgon, because washing machines love longer with Calgon. They really do. And then we'll just go for a pump. Let's go for a Hydro Pump. Hydro Pump comes through. We do have speed, of course, being a max speed one. Doesn't take him out because of the Aurora Veil. As they go for a rapid spin, which isn't going to do too much damage to us at all. But it does boost their speed, so they outspeed us the next turn. So let's go for a Hex, just so we don't miss. Rapid Spin comes through again, trying to raise their speed, which is fine. And banking on us missing the Hydro Pump, probably. But we go for a Hex anyway, which will take out the Great Tusk. So there we go. Great Tusk goes down. And now it's just the Alolan Sand Slash. But it has got the Aurora Veil. That's the problem. Our team's Aurora Veil wears off, and this thing's got one more turn. So, Gotta Go Fast comes in, the Rank Master. I love that nickname for a, a, a shiny Alolan Sand Slash, especially. Looks, definitely looks like Sonic. So, um, let's go for a... Let's go for a Vault Switch, first and foremost. So, we go for a Vault Switch. They probably go for a Swords Dance, if anything. Or an Iron Head. So, what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to go back into our Alomomola, and I'll flip turn again. Because I'm basically just trying to burn away their Aurora Veil turn at this point. So we get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is unfortunate. They go for a Swords Dance, which is scary. Very scary. Very scary indeed. But the Aurora Veil has wore off. So now we just go for a Flip Turn. Swords Dance comes through again. One more Swords Dance. That is terrifying. That is terrifying right there. As we go for a Flip Turn, which is, of course, going to do minimal damage. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. Because we're going to bring in our secret weapon, our last remaining Pokemon, Dragonite, with the Heavy Duty Boots, so we don't get multi-scale broken by Stealth Rocks. So we still got multi-scale. Now, we still die to an Ice Shard, but if we Terra normal and go for an Earthquake here, we should be able to finish them off. And if it doesn't finish them off, we've got Extreme Speed in the back to do the trick. So we'll Terra normal real quick. Like so, Dragonite coming through. What a Don. What an absolute boss. Look at that diamond on his head. Looking amazing. Anyway. They get, we go for an Earthquake. They do, in fact, don't go for an Ice Shard. As down goes the Alolan Sand Slash, and that is going to be the game. So, G, G Turtle, and that was a fun one. Um, Flareon really putting the work in that one, definitely did. Uh, didn't win us the game, but it put in work, that's for sure. Okay, Falcon has brought a solid team with the Jolteon, the Corviknight Glaceon, Slowbro King, sorry, Galar, Iron Jugulus, and Haxorus. Pretty powerful stuff, so... Um, they probably lead off with something to counter. Uh, so they, they might expect a Ninetales lead, and they might expect me to expect them to uh, lead with Slow King or Corviknight. So I think I might lead off with I might lead off with Flareon. A bit weird, but Flareon does really well here. Um, so I might lead off with Flareon and just kind of like, you know go on the offensive straight away with it. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Falcons. So they're going to lead off with Slow King. As expected, as I led off with my Flareon. So we're not off to a bad start here. And um, what we can do is we can just go straight for a Flare Blitz or a Trailblaze. Trailblaze could be equally as good. Um, won't give us any recoil damage as well. And then it'll let us activate our Guts. And then we'll just go... Let's go for a Trailblaze. Screw it. Trailblaze comes through. It's not going to do much damage. But, you know, it's, it's damage nonetheless. Bit of chip. Bit of chip. And we get a Speed Boost, which is great. As they tell a chillingly bad joke. Probably now that they have... Now that they've got a Speed Boost, they probably won't go Jolteon. Because I'm pretty sure Jolteon goes down here. So let's see what they do. So they are going to switch out with Chili Reception. What are they going to go into? Jolteon comes in. That's an interesting choice. So Jolteon is in, which is very interesting. We get poisoned from our, uh, our orb. Now, they wouldn't switch Corviknighting because Flare Blitz could be pretty obvious. Let's Terra Normal Facade right now. And that'll do damage to everything on their team pretty much. So we're going to Terrestrialize real quick into a Normal type. Flareon's looking pretty good right now going to deal some massive damage to something. They probably Volt Switch out, um, if anything, into Corviknight. But it's risky. If they go Corviknight, it's risky. It's very risky. And if they're not Rocky Helmet, then they're not. So they go for Volt Switch. They still outspeed us despite our Trailblaze because uh, Flareon is only base 65 after all. 
Um, we need two Trailblazers to outspeed a Jolteon for sure. Corviknight comes in. Interesting choice. So this turn, we go for a, a, a Facade, which is going to be boosted by Guts and also doubled in power from Guts and also boosted by Terra. So let's see how much this does to a Corviknight. I'm curious to see the damage output. Well, that's a good a third of its HP. That's, a, that's amazing. So Rocky Helmet comes through. We hit it hit by the poison as well. And now we basically have to go for a Flare Blitz. So let's go ahead and take out their strongest physical defensive wall uh, with the Flare Blitz right now. Then we've drawn the Corviknight. That's interesting. So are they going to go Haxorus to take a Flare Blitz? They go for a Sloking Switch. That's fine. Sloking is a good switch here. So we go for a Flare Blitz. It's going to sting quite a bit. Nearly takes them out. If we went for Facade there expecting the switch, we would have taken them out. But we did a lot of damage to their two wall Pokemon, which is Flareon's role, really. So that is the uh, job done for Flareon. It puts some holes in the team, which is great. So now we can go into the big guns, which is going to be... For, for, for Sloking, I'd say we probably go into um, Golurk. So I'm going to go Golurk now. So Golurk comes in. Like so. There we go. And we just go for a Poltergeist. There's no reason not to go for a Poltergeist here. So we go for a Poltergeist. That's going to take out the Sloking, of course. Which is amazing. Boom. Sloking goes down. Down it goes. Down it goes. Glaceon comes in. That's an interesting choice. So Glaceon comes in. It's got that defense boost from the snow. For like one more turn, I think. So let's go for a dynamic punch. Chilling water comes through. That's going to be doing a lot of damage. And it lowers our attack as well. So this next dynamic punch isn't going to do nearly as much damage. But it will confuse them still. Doesn't do nearly as much damage as I would have liked it to. But it is what it is at the end of the day. We got them confused. Um, and the snow does stop. So this next turn, dynamic punch is going to do a lot more damage. So let's go for another dynamic punch. Then we've drawn the Glaceon, which is fair. Fair. Are they going to go Corviknight? Corviknight's going to come through to take the dynamic punch. But again, we're going to confuse it, which is great. Um, so let's go for that. Let's go for that dynamic punch on the Corviknight after exert some pressure. There we go. Slap it in the face. Dynamic slap more like. As it gets confused, which is amazing. So with the confused Corviknight, we got Rocky Helmet Chip. And um, we can definitely switch out here. If we assume that... The, let's go Rotom. Rotom's a good switch. Rotom's a very good switch. Because they don't have a ground type. They do have the, uh, the Jolteon to absorb the vault, vault switch. But I don't think they'll go for that. Actually, I think they might. I think they might switch into Jolteon here. It's such an obvious switch. So let's see if they get fully, fully confused first. They go for the Roost. That's fine. Roost comes through. Now, do we want to trick this thing? I think we want to trick it. Let's trick it real quick. They withdraw the Corviknight, which is fine. They withdraw the Corviknight, and they go into Jolteon. So Jolteon's going to get a Choice Scarf, which is great. It's nice and shiny as well. I love it. I love shiny Jolteon. Uh, we go for a trick. It's going to get rid of our item, which is the Choice Scarf, and we'll get whatever item the um, Jolteon had, which is going to be a... Dum -ba -da -dum -ba -da -da. Throw Spray. Interesting. So it's a luring voice, probably. Um, now, since we know it's... Um, Scarf, we can just go for a Hydro Pump because they kind of have to go for a Volt Switch here. They go for a T-Bolt, interesting. So they're going to stay in an attack, does over half. We go for a Pump and that's going to do a good amount of damage. Which gives us a free switch back into Go Look. Because if we know they're locked into Thunderbolt, we may as well just do that. So we switched out first so we know they haven't switched out. They've gone for a Thunderbolt again. Iron Giant comes in. Like so. And now we can use this opportunity to get our Stealth Rocks up. So that's going to be great. So let's see how this plays out. So let's go for... Actually, no. Yeah, let's go for a Stealth Rocks. They withdraw the Jolteon, which is fine. Are they going to go Corviknight? Yeah, Corviknight comes in. That's fine. Corviknight is a fine switch. Makes a lot of sense. It exerts some pressure, of course. We get our Stealth Rocks up. Now we force them to go for a Defog. Now we can take this to our advantage and get a free switch in again. Um, but the question is, what do we go into? So I'm leaning towards the Ninetales. Um, not the Ninetales. I'm leaning towards the Rotom. But I'm also leaning towards Dynamic Punching this thing. Go for a Dynamic Punch. Because they go for a U-turn, actually, surprisingly. They don't go for the Defog. Um, which means we get a Dynamic Punch free of charge on whatever we want. Which isn't going to be appreciated by anything on that team right now. Jolteon comes in. That's going to take a Dynamic Punch to the face, apparently. Um, which is great for us. So um, Pointer Stones do it again. And we just slap this thing in the face with a dynamic punch. Like so. And Jolteon does go down, which is amazing. So we've got them on the um, we've got them on the verge of defeat, which is great. And Glaceon comes back in. So Glaceon is probably gonna finish us off with a freeze dry here. But you know what? It's fine. The heavy duty boost, which is good to know. 
And what we can do is, if they're going to go for a freeze drag, we can go with nine tails, but it does boost the defense again. Which would make it harder for Dragonite to get the KO. If we were to go the Dragonite route, of course. I say we have to stay in and go for a dynamic punch. They go for an ice beam anyway, which is going to take out Go Look, of course. So we go look down and out for the count. We've got a couple of options here. We can either go into our Aloma Moto and Flip Turn, or we can go into our Rotom. I'm, I'm leaning towards Rotom, to be honest with you. Rotom does have speed Glaceon, so we can just go for a Volt Switch here or a Hydro Pump. One of the two. Leaning towards the Volt Switch into Ninetales. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch into Ninetales. So we Volt Switch, there we go. They do stay in, which is good to know. And that Volt Switch damage tells me that we should be able to take them out of a Moonblast from Ninetales right now. So let's go for a Ninetales Switch now. There we go, Vimto comes in. Like so. Looking nice and shiny, gotta love it. We get the Snow Up, which is going to benefit them in the boost of the defense, but it's fine. As they go for a Freeze Dry, which won't do much damage to us at all. They have got Ice Body, which is interesting. So Ice Body is going to heal them a little bit. Now, we can go for a Moonblast here. I think I will go for a Moonblast here. Because they haven't got anything to switch in really other than Corbinite. As Moonblast doesn't quite get them KO'd. However, they go for a Calm Mind, which is interesting. So Calm Mind Glaceon is interesting. Now, it doesn't have speed. So even after an Ice Body here, we should be taking him out with Moonblast. Which is great. So let's go for the Moonblast now. As they just let the Glaceon go down, which makes sense. Because now they get a free switch into Corviknight. Who can then go for a Defog to get rid of the Stealth Frogs, which is great for them. Iron Jugulus comes in. Now this thing's probably got Flamethrower or Flash Cannon or something along those lines. It's not Boost. And it is Booster Energy, it looks like. Yeah, Booster Energy in what though? It's speed or Special Attack? Speed. Okay, so this thing's fast. Now, we can switch out into Aloma Mola here, no problem. So let's go ahead and do that. Aloma Mola comes through. There we go. A Palindrome comes in. The Aloma Mola. And they go for a Flamethrower, which isn't going to do much damage to us at all. Now, they do get the Burn, which is unfortunate, because we are a more physical set. So our Play Rough isn't going to be able to two-shot this thing. I don't think it two-shot anyway. But, you know, it was close. Um, if we assume they're going to switch out here, we should flip turn. So I'm going to go ahead and flip turn. They actually go for a charge beam, which is going to miss. As we go for a flip turn real quick. Now, I'm hoping this thing is thinking what I'm thinking it's thinking. And that's going to boost up its uh, special attack with charge beam. Um, and take out the Aloma Mola. But I don't think that's how it's going to play out. So let's go Rotom real quick. Rotom's a decent switch here because I know we can take a Dark Pulse from this thing. The snow is going to stop. And then we go for a Volt Switch. We always go for a Volt Switch here. Dark Pulse comes through. That's fine. Oh, they get a crit. That's unfortunate. I don't... Uh, actually, no. Does the crit matter? Yeah, it matters because it's Booster Energy Speed. So it's, it's not boosted in any way. So that's unfortunate that they did that. But it is what it is. Let's go into Dragonite. I think Dragonite can um, do some stuff here. So Dracoris comes in. This baits in the uh, Corviknight. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out again. This time, I'm going to go into Ninetales, and we're going to try and Moonblast that thing. So I'm going to make a double into my Ninetales. They do withdraw the Iron Jugulus, and they're going to go Corviknight, right? Yeah, Corviknight comes in. This is great, because now we can Encore them into whatever they do. So if they Defog, we can Encore them, and then we can just fire off Moonblasts, uh, which would be great. So pressure is going to be exerted. And then we withdraw our Dragonite as well, because I didn't want to get the Rocky Helmet chip and break our, um, break our multi-scale, you know? So we'll bring in Ninetales now. Get the snow up. We'll go for a freeze dry. Because there's no reason not to go for a freeze dry here. Freeze dry comes through. Bit of chip. Nothing too drastic. Oh, we got the freeze. We got the freeze. No way. They're frozen solid. So we do have Encore. So if they went for Defog here, we could have at least Encore them into that. Um, but we don't need to now because we got the freeze dry off. So let's go for a freeze dry again. We'll just continually go for it. They are frozen solid still. I think it's pretty much impossible for them to D4 at this point unless they have a fire move. So let's go for a freeze dry once again. Freeze dry comes through. Once again. They are still frozen solid, which is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. As now I go for a... Because if they D4 here, they go for a roost, right? Is it worth getting the Aurora Veil up now? I think it's worth getting the Aurora Veil up now. So we may as well do it. Aurora Veil comes through. And if they D4, they have to go for a Roost, right? They don't D4, which is fantastic. That Frozen Corviknight is amazing. The Snow is going to stop. So we got the Aurora Veil up just in time. 
And we go for a Moonblast here to take this thing out. So let's go for a Moonblast now. Take out the Corviknight. That way, if they did switch out into the Iron Jugulus or the Haxorus to try and take a Freeze Dry, um, they would have been met with a Moonblast, which would have definitely KO'd one of the two. Iron Jugulus comes in. This thing's going to flame throw me into Oblivion. However, they have already Terrored, I believe. So I'm not too worried about this. So let's go for a Moonblast. Moonblast comes through. We do outspeed, of course, because it's Iron Jugulus. And down it goes to a Moonblast. So Ninetales coming through right now with the pain for my opponent, which is fantastic. Haxorus now comes in. Can Haxorus take a, a Moonblast? I don't think he can. Unless, of course, no, they, they're not Focus Sash anymore. Even if they were Focus Sash, it's gone. They break the mold. We go for a Moonblast here all the time. Obviously, they've already terrored, so they can't do that. As Haxorus goes down to Moonblast, and Ninetales wins us the game with a little bit of hacks, which is always nice. So, GG for Captain Falcon. That was a fun one. I enjoyed that. Well, that's the lot. Honestly, Flareon is a hard one to pull off, but I gave it my all and managed to punch some holes in my opponent's teams, which no doubt led me to victory. If you want to try the team out, go ahead. Use the code on screen now. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in a bit.